You're listening to the Run For Your Lives podcast. Welcome to the show. I'm Daphne. And I'm Paik. And this is the Run For Your Lives podcast. This episode, we're talking about the 2020 science fantasy action film Monster Hunter, written and directed by Paul W.S. Anderson and released December 18th, 2020. Always so happy when we talk about a newer movie. Yes, more recent. (laughs) It's good to have more recent and newer movies coming out. Always good. I know. I'm looking forward to the future because we have Godzilla vs. Kong is coming out. And they moved up A Quiet Place 2. Yes. So that's coming out in May. So there's two to look forward to. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And this this movie, without getting too much into it right now, um, definitely gave me some fun like Godzilla vibes. We've been living in that world. Yes. I mean, of course, there's like the, the Nursula, which is played off. I mean, Scylla is the giant spider that you know kaiju that was in king of the monsters which is kind of cool and i was looking at that i was like does that like mean spider but like you know it was like casilla is like a greek like god goddess thing i didn't look into it too deep but like <laughs> myth- mythical figure from like greek culture and it didn't really have anything to do with spiders as much as i know but people like using it for that so i don't know um <laughs> but also one thing i noticed off the very top of this movie because we've been in that you know, Godzilla mindset and world for a lot recently. Did you know who one of the studios behind this movie was? <gasps> Toho! Toho! <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm excited about that, too. Toho, they're very creative. They're very innovative. And they've been telling stories like this for quite some time. Yeah. And I appreciate their brand of storytelling. Yes. So much. <laughs> yeah. And I think... With this movie, and I know you'll go into some behind the scenes and stuff in a second, but just to set it up is not really overall thoughts, but overall, like when I first went in, is like right off the bat, I was like, okay, this movie's going to un- unapologetically set itself up as something crazy and fantastical and not to be like dug into super deep because it's going to be crazy. <laughs> like, and they're okay with that. When the first thing you see is like pirate ships sailing on sand. Oh, You're like, yeah. okay, okay, so this movie's not going to take itself too seriously, and that's cool. <laughs> Absolutely. My first my first thing that I thought of is, ah, uh, yes, Paul W.S. Anderson gives Mila Jovovich another vehicle to show that she's a badass action mm-hmm. hero. There's a lot of, like, married couples that do stuff like that, because that's also, I mean, it's, it's the uh, Helena Bonham Carter with Tim Burton. Yes. Like situation, you know, you gotta get that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I loved her in the Resident Evil movies, even the ones that weren't so good. <laughs> I liked her in this one as well. I mean, like you said, it didn't apologize for being what it was. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. And again, we'll get into this more. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, I, you know, I'll preface this with, you know, because it's based off of the video game series, which I never played. I've never played any of the Monster Hunter Me games. Me either. So I'm not really sure, but I'm sure. So I'll say it off the top. Anybody who's listening to this, if you're a fan of the games, if you've played the games, I would love to even, you know, it's after this episode has, you know, been posted, obviously, because you're listening to us. But please write in and give us some feedback after the fact now, because I'm really interested to hear some comparisons and thoughts from people who have played the games and, and how they oh, pulled yeah. some of this stuff off. Cause there's a lot of like things like nods to the games I could tell throughout this movie, like a lot of like the costumes and the weapons and characters and stuff where I'm like, not knowing the games, this looks real like out of place and weird. But if you're a big fan of the games, I'm like, well, maybe some of this stuff is like really cool to see. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little digging at different times because I was curious is this person in the game? Is this person not in the game? Is this what yeah. they look like? Is this weapon in the game? I went back and forth trying to yeah, I did a figure little bit a of few that. things out. Apparently, Ron Perlman's character was a pretty good nod at his Admiral yes. in the games. But- <laughs> yes. 
And we'll talk about him in just a bit. Oh, yeah. my goodness. But first, I'll let you do your behind the scenes. I jumped the gun a little <laughs> bit. But, but I have some notes. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to talk about this movie without tipping my hand too much on, like, you know, I'll say it. Like, I didn't enjoy this movie as much as a lot of other movies we've talked. Like, it has its problems, for sure. Oh, yes. But, it does. But I am excited to talk about it because there's still a lot of fun stuff, you know, to talk about. Even if the movie wasn't incredible, there's still a lot of fun stuff that I'm going to talk about. I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. So this movie was filmed in and around Cape Town, South Africa and Spitzkop, Namibia. It's based on the Monster Hunter media franchise that started with Capcom's PlayStation 2 game of the same name. The film stars Mila Jovovich, Ron Perlman, Tony Ja, and Megan Good. It had a budget of $60 million and only scored $31.3 million at the box office. And lest we forget, this is during a pandemic, we really don't know. I mean, numbers are numbers, but they don't mean what they used to yeah. when it comes to the box office. Because now there's all these like streaming deals and video on demand and... Stuff like that, and they don't really take that into account with the box office, so you never really know yeah. how that helps. And it hasn't been, I mean, I feel like it's still muddy waters, and I st it's not getting cleared out. Like, I'm yeah. not getting any clear information, not able to find anything. So maybe at some point we'll we'll be able to talk about the differences between the box office before and after. Yeah. But for this podcast, we're going to stick to... Our usual discussion. <laughs> the movie clocks in at 103 minutes. Paik, bring on your synopsis. All right. When Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers are transported to a new world, they engage in a desperate battle for survival against enormous enemies with incredible powers in this feature film based on the games by Capcom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like we're kind of like banging it into your heads like this was based on a video game. Yes. But <laughs> also, I mean, the movie does that very well. And I think the movie took a lot of time to be like, this is video game stuff. <laughs> like, uh, The music. Mm -hmm. The music reminded me of like a cross between video game and like early 80s movies. Some early yeah. 80s action horror movies. There's just like this sound to it. It just a vibe. And they didn't use that music the entire movie. Uh, for the full movie but in different parts they would play it and i'd be like i feel like i am back in one of those early action movies because oh, yeah. the music just reminded me of a video game it's like an arcade yes. mm -hmm. i felt like i was in an arcade and you know you hear all yeah of the different games going off <laughs> especially with when they're like fighting like the yes. big face-offs with like the giant like boss monsters yes that's when the music and the sound effects really like clued in. It was like, this is, this is a video game. Like yep. this is, cause I think Mila Jovovich even said in an interview, she like wanted people watching this to feel like they were kind of playing the game as they were watching it. So yeah, that cool. makes sense. And I kind of felt like that. Mm -hmm. It did make me want to actually go online and I haven't done this yet, but I want to go on YouTube and see what this video game actually looks like. Cause I've only seen still shots from when uh -huh. I was doing research. But I want to kind of see what it looks like if someone's playing the game. Like, what does it really, what are the graphics like? What does it really look like? Yeah. So that's something I'm just going to have to do at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought about like picking them up and playing because I know they're very popular games, but based off of like what I have watched and seen and looked into, it's not 100% my style because there's a lot of grinding, which somebody who's not like a video game knowledge person or whatever, what that means is there's you, you take a lot of time to like level your characters up and it's a lot of, you know, like resource grinding and digging. Like it's like, you got to go kill like this creature over and over and over and over again to get the right equipment and items. And it's just a very time consuming kind of thing. And I'm more of like a story based like video game person I'm not into the grinding so much. No. So, and it seems like there's a lot of that in this game. Or in that these games. gets boring, I yeah. think. I like the story-based games, too. I don't enjoy um, like Mortal Kombat for that reason. Because some of those games you have to play as each character and fight each character and build everything up to get mm -hmm. to the highest possible level. And I, I just don't have it in me <laughs> to invest that much. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I what feel, next? Is it time to dive in? Start I feel like it's time. To, it's, 
Yeah, it's definitely time to dive in. Cool. And start talking about these characters. And it's funny, I thought we had more characters to talk about until about 20 minutes in, and I realized that <laughs> a lot of them died quickly. Yeah, I have. I was just like, this was real quick and early in a movie to just whittle it down to one person left out of the team. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I like this team. I have my notes. I was like, yes. this is a well-knit team. They're a great group. Can't wait to see how they... Never mind. Nope. Okay. Because <laughs> I even so say, I said, let's hope this group of soldiers fare better off than in Skull Island. Probably not. Probably not. And then nope. just a few minutes later, nope, definitely nope. not. <laughs> <laughs> Did not go well for them. I was so excited at first, too. And I'm thinking, oh, this is a great cast. And T.I., who's a rapper... Was yeah. in it, had a part in it, and I think he played Link. And yeah. I was really, like, excited because I had seen some of them in different films, and I thought, oh, this will be really good. It's going to be fun. Nope. About 20 minutes in, they were all gone. Mm -hmm. I just had to retrain my brain on what I was going <laughs> to be watching after that, because what I thought yeah. was not what we saw. <laughs> yeah. So I say first character... With a S in parentheses at the end of that to talk about, because I have in this section, just like Lieutenant Artemis and her team, because I'm just kind of including the little bit of time we have with that group in with her notes, because, yeah, they I don't know, they didn't really warrant their own note section for me, because I was like, eh, they weren't around too long. Um. <laughs> no, they were not. We learn at first that they're like, Artemis is leader of this UN security team, and they're out on a mission trying to find um bravo team i believe it was yeah that had disappeared after a windstorm and so they're out there doing their thing and then they see the windstorm oh, i wouldn't i would have oh i couldn't believe it looked very scary to me i would not uh -huh. want to have been there <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so we find out later in the movie exactly kind of what happens but yeah Basically, because of this storm, they are now jumping dimensions into this other, they don't really call it anything officially, but I call it the monster world. I'll go with that. <laughs> um, and that's what it does, is it kind of jumps them into the monster world dimension, and they take quite a tumble in these uh, big steel boxes. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> oh, that was quite a scene of them going from the real world to the, I think they were calling it the new world. Yeah. Them it seemed like they were just dropping. Like they'd fallen mm -hmm. off a cliff or something and they it just kept rolling and rolling and yeah. rolling and My only question though is cuz it put them out like way away from the tower, but weren't those portals coming from the tower they established at the end? So there's a, Yeah. There's one on a laundry list of like logistical <laughs> issues I have with this movie. <laughs> cuz like no, wouldn't their Humvees and stuff have come out at the tower if that's where this Storm is radiating from because that's how they transport back and forth during the Rathalos fight at the end. Yes. At the tower. So wouldn't they have come out there and not somewhere else far away? But yeah. again, I have to tell myself, don't question everything so much because you're just going <laughs> to make this movie more and more if you start questioning things. <laughs> at <laughs> like... some point, you have to, like we have in other films, embrace those moments of disbelief. Yes. <laughs> you just have to wrap your arms around them and hold them tight because uh, those are going to yeah. happen. And I had a feeling in this movie that we were going to get some of that. I'd heard comments about this film before we watched it. And so I didn't go in with the greatest of, oh, it's going to be the best movie ever. I just kind of went into it thinking, okay, we're going to watch this and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, now, based off of just like Rotten Tomatoes scores, it has a terrible score from Rotten Tomatoes. But Rotten Tomatoes does, they split into two. There's like the critics review, like critic score and then like the audience score. And the critic score was terrible and low, but the audience score was actually pretty decent. Oh. So, because I think it was like 30% for like the critic scores, but I think the audience score had it at like 70. Oh, wow. That's so, a difference like, of opinion. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I think it's one of those things where like audiences when not looking at it through a critical eye. Because that's what I was even saying. It's like, I'm going to end up hating this movie more if I really try to question things. But yeah. if you turn, it's one of those movies where I told myself, just turn my brain off and enjoy it for what it is, for the spectacle mm -hmm. and what they're doing. And I do enjoy it a lot more. I didn't yeah. hate it. Like, I was like, yeah, it was worth watching once I just realized 
it's just going to be a fun popcorn flick and that's what it's for. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And there were some things in it that I really liked. And when we get to them and we get to talk about the monsters, I'm sure you know exactly what one that I adored. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I know you. <laughs> the second they showed up, I'm like, and Daphne's squealing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So Ugh. I liked Artemis. I thought that she was a good leader. She knew how to keep her team in check. She gave them that great pep talk saying, we fight and survive no matter the odds. And then she gets injected. And we meet yeah. those wonderful scorpion, spider, weird Nercillas. Mm-hmm. Oh, those yeah, she's, were scary. She's great. She's, she played a real good like military-minded... Military, military. Is that the one I'm gonna go with? I'm You're sorry, I had there. to. I had to do it. Oh. <laughs> I almost hate myself for breaking that reach, but I had to do it. No, but she does. <laughs> she's yeah, military minded. Like she's keeping her team together while she had them, which wasn't long. But oh my goodness! But it keeps her going for sure. I mean, well, a couple so. of them, Steeler and Axe, get killed right away. Yeah, when they meet the Diablos. Mm-hmm. And then they rush and try to get, they go inside this cave, which I would not be running in that cave. I know it saves you, but there was something about the cave and the stone that reminded me of another movie that you would watch and you see people escaping to stone to get away from something else that was underground mm-hmm. and chasing them. And I think you might know what that is, Pick. Um... The other thing inside the cave isn't clicking for me. No, but people would run <laughs> to get on top of stone well, to yes, stay yeah. away from another oh, yeah. predator. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that one I definitely okay, mark yeah. with the with with the oblos. I was just like, and like in Tremors, he's just hanging out under the sand, <laughs> waiting for somebody to go back out there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It that yes. it had that vibe for a minute for me for sure. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, but. Getting back to Artemis, she, yeah, she gets her team in, she gets them excited and motivated, and then she is stung. Marshall dies basically in a gruesome way. I think his head was bitten off. Oh, yeah. I said uh, in my notes, Marshall just got gripped and ripped like a beef jerky stick. Oh, Um. (laughs) Is this what we have to look forward to during this podcast? (laughs) I am so in. I can't wait for the next Uh. one. (laughs) <laughs> the near Stillis puts her in like this weird cocoon like it it seems like some like she's in a food sack i guess is what you could yeah. call it and she's asleep you know she finally wakes up and notices that one of her remaining team members is dead dash dash mm-hmm. is hanging upside down and then she finds link and they're trying to escape. He dies in the most gruesome. Oh, that was. Oh, just that was rough. Beyond fucked up. I just had it. Again, I reference my notes a lot, but like I have fun with some stuff that I write, but I was like, that was just yikes, is all yeah. I could say about it. I was like, that, no, 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 <laughs> no. I mean, he seems like he's okay, but he's having trouble moving. And then he his shirt lifts up and you see. That they've used him as an incubator for their It's like children. those wasps. The wasps that uh like implant their eggs inside caterpillars and stuff. Yes. That's what it made me think of. Oh. And then oh. I just like was creeped out thoroughly after making that connection. Like oh. ah. Cause that's what it is. You have to have a food source for your young when they hatch. And so yeah. the best way to do it is just plant the eggs into the food source. Ugh. Definitely. <laughs> Not something I want to do or experience, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> then she runs out and she she like rips her clothes off because she's trying to f- make sure oh. she's not being incubated. Oh yeah, I would have. I totally felt her in that moment, just uh, uh, just Ugh. freaking out and squirming and like just checking every inch of her body. Like no, 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 no. no. Mm. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> disgusting. That that grossed me out. Oh god. Yeah. So bad. And then she if I has this ring, but I don't understand what the ring was. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't really touch on the significance of it very much. It's like, okay, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea what the ring was for. 
Yeah, I don't know. Can't help you there. <laughs> Big question mark. Yeah. Big question mark. But she's she's smart. I noticed also, uh, I was like, so I guess she's also real good at like field medical skills. She's also a trained field medic for some reason, even though she's a lieutenant. But I'm sure some, I'm sure most soldiers, I mean, I've never been in the military, so I don't know. But I don't know. Maybe military people can chime in here a little bit. Like, does everybody get like some level of, of medical training or <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. But she tw- seemed real good with knowing how to take care of, of Hunter later on. But yeah. even here, like she quickly like cauterizes her wound after escaping from the Nursilla and like in trying a to very, get the hell away from them. In a very MacGyver way. Like she opens yeah. the bullet up and takes out the powder and puts it on, yeah. on her wound and then lights it on fire with what looked, I think it was Flint. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of like, okay, wow, I guess <laughs> you can do just about anything. And then, like you said, later she treats Hunter, yeah, like sets him all up. I mean, I thought he was a goner because he got hit. I mean, he got thrown. I thought it was over for him. Uh huh. But I feel like at that point when she, once they got their fighting through, which I thought the fight scenes were amazing. And I think part of that is because, of course... I have some notes on both of them later that detail a little bit of their training. Mm -hmm. But the fight scenes were really great. And at that point, when she saves him and starts pulling him across the sand on what was a piece of one of those Diablos, Mm -hmm. piece of skin, (laughs) plate of armor, whatever, I I just started calling them Team JJ. And... (laughs) And that's how it was. Jovovich and Ja. Nice. So Team JJ. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it was that Diablo like scales. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. I do like her, uh, yeah, like you said, like MacGyver type skills, very adaptive <laughs> and just like yeah. thinking on the fly. And then, yeah, you mentioned, which we'll talk more about Tony Ja's character, but yeah, they worked really well together. Even yeah. though not not at first. But. No, no. There seemed to be a lot of disconnect between the two of them. She mm. almost destroys his, what looks like a little figurine of his maybe wife and child. Yeah. They that he has. Don't they really don't talk really about talk other, about you know, it. He talks about home and it kind of seemed like this was his family. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. He was scared. He didn't want to lose them. Because it was because he had to go back to get the little, he had wrapped them in this material and he dropped it while he was running or leading the Diablo away. He had to run back and grab it. And that, I think, almost ended up costing him his life because yeah. the Diablo was able to catch up. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, they didn't get along real well from the start, even though he was trying to help them from the beginning. He shot that arrow to let them know that sh- shit was coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and they and he, opened fire on him immediately. immediately. He was like, I'm just trying to help you I'm guys. just trying to help Jeez. you. Jeez. <laughs> so he tries to help them, you know, He and he tries to help her. Like, he's he's just trying to do the right thing. And it took them some time to build up this communication. I feel like they bonded over a piece of Hershey chocolate. Yeah, it was this uh, chocolate and water trade-off. Yeah, that that helped a lot. Um, <laughs> I was like, how this chocolate bar, how this Hershey's, isn't just melted all the shit at this point. I don't know. No clue. It maybe through the magic power of product placement, it stayed whole. But <laughs> um, it could be, or she's got some air conditioning pants. That she, or a bag, the bag. I thought she took it out of her pocket, though. So I, I don't know. Yeah. It just seemed a little crazy to me. It's just another one of those strange things. Yeah. But hey, storytelling over logic. Roll with it. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of that. Uh. I like, too, how he used her when they realized that they had to go across the sand to get to, um, I guess, the oasis. They would just had to get over there. She was trying to figure out how to get home. and they, what, The dialogue in this movie did not tell as big of a story, but I feel like Jovovich and Ja really together 
worked out and told a story with a mm-hmm. lack of dialogue and the lack of a script. Because I don't think the script was the greatest. Yeah. I think, though, the actors, through their actions, told the story mm-hmm. and helped me understand things a little bit better. Yeah. Than the script did. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, they... That was the strong point, was <laughs> J&J. Team J&J, yeah, as you team call J&J. Yeah, Team J&J. They were definitely, yeah, a big strong point. Even though, you know, like the battle with the Diablos was very, you know, over the top action sequence. Of course, that's what but it's I like. But I liked be. it. Yeah. Like, I guess, like, the Venom didn't really work. No. So then they're like, okay, we'll just throw other stuff. Like, here's a rocket launcher and this super cool bone sword and a grappling gun that I just learned how to use. <laughs> But we're going to make it work. And, you know, he's like slinging his head around like she would not be hanging on at all. But she manages to drive the sword through its head anyway. He's dead. Awesome. It was cool. Very video game. Like it was like like God of War kind of, you know, climbing around on top of this giant thing and having to stab it in the head. (laughs) I got that vibe, though, from the weapons because Mm -hmm. in some of those weapons, like they had this electricity, this energy, and then they turned to fire. It just... Took me back to some of Kratos' weapons in God of War. Yeah. It's like, okay, yep, yeah, I'm I'm seeing the connection. I'm not having trouble realizing this is a movie based on a video game. Not a problem. I get it. Yeah. Um, you really see that. Like, the final, it's not really final face-off, but, you know, Rathalos, when they're facing off with him at the tower, and, like, everybody else is getting squashed and, you know, from a distance and stuff. And she literally is like face to face, head on with it, just slicing it on the face with these swords and have the wings and stuff. It's like, that doesn't look really smart. Like, no, it doesn't. How giant that thing is. And you're just like literally running up and like trying to punch it in the face. Yes. Like, uh, yeah. They were things that did not make sense. But they did. But that's in what the you realm- do in a video game is you run right up to the giant evil thing. Like, yes. That's- <laughs> In Mario Brothers, you're trying to get to the castle, like get Mm -hmm. into the castle to face the big boss. It's the same thing. I mean, they're facing the big boss. You have to fight them. You can't just wait for them to roll over. They're not going to do that. You have to fight them anyway. Yeah. And I love that she, Hunter uses her as bait for the Nearsilis to get, um, to go ahead and get the Venom. Yeah. And she was so mad at him after that and yelled at him and said, next time you're the bait. Um, <laughs> I loved that they prepped like they were prepping for things and he was teaching her how to use some of the weapons in what looked like a ship graveyard. It's like what you would find like in a pirate movie where all the ships have crashed and they're all just like together in the water. Well, this was kind of like a makeshift graveyard of ships, like you would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole training montage, where she's learning all these really cool weapons real quickly. Again, kind of out of place because like, wasn't the plan just to like knock the Diablos like <laughs> unconscious or poison it and then just go? Yes. It's like so obviously it's like oh well they're gonna need all these weapons, plot wise. So we got to make sure that we know that she can use them. <laughs> <laughs> Although realistically, I'm thinking I, I in her place would be just like wait, but if we take out the Diablos, I don't need these. But okay, yes. let's learn how to use them anyway. <laughs> Because the point is for it to be like a video game yeah. and collecting weapons and doing all those things. Those are all things that are part of a video game. Mm-hmm. However, it's not necessarily what I think the best use of time would have been. But you yeah. know what? It's not my movie. <laughs> I didn't like it, write it. <laughs> seems like it got dark real fast. And dark is not good when no. the Narcilla is no. right there. like. Ugh. No, no, no. And we'll talk about the creatures in a little bit. And there yeah. are a lot of things about those creatures. Because I dug a little info. I took the info that we learned. And I also dug a little into a little bit to get more information. Nice. So I think really the only thing else I have about Artemis, just, you know, just talk about, yeah, that final moment. Or you can I say final, but there's more to the movie. But like the big fight. Because it's weird because it's not like it's the final fight because the movie ends on a fight, which was a problem for me in its own thing that we'll, I'll talk about <laughs> later. But but yeah, but this fight with the Rathalos, because it ends up, she like falls through a portal back into our world, quote unquote, the real world, the old, you know, whatever. And then it's just like immediately rescued by the like search team who's been looking for her. But then I knew it was going to happen. 
Like it just kind of, I was like, and when does Rathalos show up? And he's also come through a portal. And then it did happen. Not that it took away from it. Cause like, yeah, this is still pretty cool. <laughs> but like, <laughs> she was awesome. I had a great, but it was kind of funny. Cause I'm like, well, here's Rathalos, like ripping tanks apart and gri- like ripping people out oh, of them. Oh my and goodness. Just torching planes and choppers out of the sky and blows up. And then, you know, all these people are dying and there's murder and chaos and fire. And she's like, just slowly and calmly, like digging through all the supplies and I don't, let me yes. find the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have notes on the Rathalos. There were things about that one. Mm-hmm. When that Rathalos was with that tank, it to me looked like it was an iguana playing with a toy. Like, here's this <laughs> tank and it's my toy and I'm going to rip mm-hmm. the top off. And yeah. oh my gosh, so strange. But yeah. Yeah, it is what it uh, is with this movie. You just kind of have to roll with it. Yeah. She, by the end of the movie, has like completely transitioned over to like video game badass warrior person. Like that's. <laughs> Which we should expect in a movie starring Mila Jovovich. Yeah, of course. Okay. We should just mm-hmm. from now on, if we cover any more of her movies. We're just going to. That is what will be in the forefront of my mind. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about Ranger. So let's talk about Hunter oh, and Hunter. Velcro. No, maybe not the girl Velcro. Not Velcro. I think <laughs> we don't have to talk about that too much. But no. <laughs> again, another. Um, I, I don't know. I, I yeah, okay. <laughs> but but Hunter, I guess oh. is just we can call him. That's what she refers to him as, and that's all he's credited as. But oh, I love me some Tony Jaw. He Man, was great. I am great. a huge fan of the Angbak series. I don't know if you know. I highly recommend if you're a fan of martial arts, you see the martial arts and the stunts and stuff that Tony Jaw is doing in this movie. Crank that up by like five. And that's the Ong Bak series. It's just constant him flipping and jumping around and like, like it really made me like the scene where like all the, um, Apseros are like yes. falling off the cliff and he's like dangling and like running on the top of them. And like, you know, these like <laughs> very like, you know, martial arts stunt, kind of things and he's you know kipping up around here and flipping and jumping and doing yeah if you like the like martial arts and like sequences like that from tony jaw in this movie then highly recommend watching the ong bak series because it's that plus him just like decimating people with great like killing blows and (laughs) punching people and beating people up it's great (laughs) well i i feel like i should bring this up since we're talking about him he he is a stunt man. Tony Jaa is mm-hmm. a stunt man. He's a martial artist. He does his own stunts. I mean, and I think the reason he and um Jovovich work so well together is she studied jiu-jitsu and taekwondo for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So they have that martial artist background. They have a background in the martial arts. So yeah. I think that helped them work really well together in the fight scenes that they had together. But he's just in a class all of his own. Oh, he's incredible. <laughs> I need to go back and rewatch the Ong Bak movies. It's been a little while, but I have not there's seen my them, but I feel <laughs> highly like I have recommended to. for you and for any listeners is Ong Bak. Watch Ong Bak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally down for that. <laughs> I like that he was trying to help them. He didn't even know who they were. And he tried to get the, you know, he shot that arrow over, was trying to get their attention to show them that the Diablos were coming. And he's shooting fire arrows like he's doing things. And he has the coolest weapons, which I actually added a section on the weapons to this <laughs> podcast because there were so many cool ones. Nice. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, he's he's one hell of an archer for sure. That is some yeah. incredible range and... He's got his cool, like, explodey arrows that he's lighting. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really cool. He may have left the stack of rocks that she, that, um, you can Artem- check and see if Diablos is in range. Yes, which also <laughs> reminded me kind of that movie that yes. we may have started this podcast with way back in July <laughs> called Tremors. Um, gave me a Tremors vibe. There were a few times I did get Tremors vibe from this movie, just certain things were coincidentally similar yeah just gave me that little vibe um For sure there was also there was a, a part where he was fight or 
I think Artemis was fighting with the Diablo and he almost got struck by the tail, but he did this lean back matrix like move. And I was just like, okay, now we're in the matrix. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to all these different movies. (laughs) Oh yeah. But I liked that a lot. It was good. He's, it's fun, but I love when they do, they first meet up and immediately just start fighting with each other. <laughs> just like knocks her out, ties her up and takes her back. But it's all to keep her safe. Yes. But he doesn't know whether he can trust her. But I was like, it's not the friendliest way to take someone to shelter. But, you know, you got her there. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Like, man, these two really need to learn to get along very soon. And they finally do. I mean, she decides to save him as he's falling into the nest. And then... They have their their chocolate moment, and that was oh the that chocolate was moment. sweet. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you yeah. did there. I don't know if you meant to. <laughs> I did. Okay, I'm, I have a problem. I'm, you do, no. <laughs> but let's embrace it. Yes, <laughs> let's embrace it. Yeah, but then it was his plan to lure the the Nursilla so they could trap it and take the the venom sack to use to shoot the Diablos. Although I was like, how do they not expect just a billion of them to come out at once? And I don't not ju- know. And not just lure the one away. They got lucky. that Only one came with just enough time for them to kill it, take the sack, and then all the other ones came. Again. Suspension of disbelief. <sighs> Add to the list. <laughs> <laughs> one of those things. But, yeah. I did like the, the hinting of them taking the venom and using it as a weapon, even though it didn't work out. Yeah. They are hinting at, because again, I haven't played the games, but I know enough about them. That's a big part of the game, from what I understand, is killing monsters and then taking like parts of them and like using them as weapons and items that you can fight other monsters and bigger monsters with. That is, makes sense. I mean, like sense. the weapons, you see like the swords are made out of like bones and teeth and stuff of big enemies. Yeah. And so I think that's a big part of the game is like the you kill monsters to kind of take parts and stuff from them to build more weapons and clothing and items and stuff like that so you're kind of getting a nod to the game series with them doing that it's like oh we have to kill this so we can take the venom sack and make arrows out of it to then try to take down this bigger one yep it's a long string of things that you have to do Mm -hmm. to move on in the game yeah i did find it interesting when he was recovering from that big smash that he took he seemed a bit irritated that she had saved him and i wondered maybe he thought he maybe he wanted to die i don't know maybe he wanted to go be with his family but we don't even know if his family is dead like Mm -hmm. it's just one of those questions i did end up with a bunch of questions yeah when watching this movie because i feel (laughs) like they were Ugh. i think they meant it to be a string of movies i think Anderson was hoping that it would be like the next Resident Evil series. Yeah. And I I think the timing may be just wrong for mm-hmm. it because of COVID and people having to stay home and not go to the theater and movies are just not making as much money as they yeah. were. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yep, anything else to say about Tony Jaws, Hunter? Um, I think my only other note is, again, this is funny. I'm like ending my notes. I'm like, oh, and then the Rathalos fight. But, you know, it's again with how well of a like quick thinker he is and how prepared and crafty he is. As you know, because I'm like, you know, it's a nice way to take out the Rathalos, like blow him up from the inside. And then <laughs> maybe not. I was like, did this not work, too? I was like, what is going? You know, it didn't work as well as I thought. But then Hunter has appeared through a portal and he's now there in the real world. And he's got his bang arrows. Yay. And that will finish him <laughs> off. Just a well-placed shot to get that last explosion that finally counts. I don't know. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> They'd had to up the drama. They had to up the suspense and the action. Yeah. So that's why. <laughs> yeah. But did you have any other notes on him? I, um, I don't. I feel like we've covered everything. I, I just really liked how he was trying to save them without knowing. And even at the beginning of the movie, we saw him trying to save someone Yeah, on the ship. And then he gets hit. And the person that he was trying to save is safe, but he's the one out in the middle of the sand. Yeah. Which boats, again, going back to boats in a sand ocean, is still right, quite sure. a concept. 
Sure, they me. didn't explain how that works, but sure. No, okay. <laughs> it's just another part of it. It's another mm-hmm. part of it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Which then, speaking about that, the admiral of that ship. Oh, goodness. I think will be the next kind of point to talk about the admiral and that team a little bit. I don't have a lot of notes on the team, but but we have Ron Perlman. And I did, <laughs> when I first saw him, I was like, wow, Ron Perlman. <laughs> It's like Admiral of a pirate ship that sails on sand. We're going to start this one off real creatively. All right, let's go. <laughs> um, and then after that opening scene, he was just gone. Yeah. And I remember thinking while watching the movie, I was like, they're going to have to bring him back, right? Like, yeah. I was like, he is too big of a name to just like show up in this opening sequence and then just be forgotten about. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're going to come back. They're going to circle back around, aren't they? And so... When they finally do, and we get the first glimpse of the Rathalos, and then Perlman and the others kind of jump in. I was like, and there he is. I'd wonder. I was wondering when he was going to come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. He just shows up with his boat in the sand and his team of people. Yeah, there yeah, wasn't get... a, lo- a lot to say <laughs> yeah. about his team of people. Yeah, the only two that like have names that were credited that I know which one was which. Like, Because like, Perlman's character, Admiral, is there with uh, Artemis, kind of. Yes. Swinging swords around, looking all fancy, but it was only just to make the Apseros like split around them. But they weren't actually fighting anything; they were just looking cool, I guess. Uh- <laughs> yeah. And then we have Handler and Aiden were the two that kind of repelled down from the trees to save Hunter. Yes, and there's another and- one named Leah that mm-hmm. she may have been the one with the scope. That was looking, or she was a repeller. I can't remember one of the two. Yeah, but she was. I don't, the, yeah, she was. <laughs> I the didn't third give one. a lot of light on them at all. But they're all from the game. So, like all three yeah. of those those characters, as well as the admiral, are from the game. And Hunter is as well, but a later incarnation, I believe. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I was able to find out because I found a picture, and I I think it's. I'm not sure the name of the game. But when looking at the picture, it's like, yep, that's him. Same clothes, same hair, same everything. Yeah. So it had to be him. Well, I know. I'm, I'm a big, like, I haven't played Monster Hunter, but I am a huge fan of Super Smash Bros. I've played Smash Bros. a lot, and I still play a lot. Like, I was playing a bunch yesterday, and we'll probably play more tonight when we're done recording. Because um, <laughs> it's just fun. So Rathalos showed up, and I got real excited because I haven't played Monster Hunter, but Rathalos is in Super Smash Bros., and I have faced him in that many times. Oh, my goodness. Does he look the same? It was spot on. It was so cool. (laughs) I was like, yes, that's so awesome. It looks just like. And so I know there's a lot of, because Super Smash Bros. is still releasing new characters, even though the game came out like three years ago now. They're still releasing new characters periodically. Mm Mm-hmm. And we've been getting really, like, the one that dropped, like, a couple of weeks ago was, like, more, uh, oh, God, what, I can't even think of the name of the game series right now, where, <laughs> this means nothing to you, it all sounds like a different language, but uh, Shulk is a character that's on there, then just, like, whatever game series he's from, I can't think of right now, they release more of those, and, like, Steve from Minecraft was one of the more recent releases. Oh, my releases. gosh, I know who Steve is, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, like, some weird <laughs> ones, but people have been calling for it, because it's, like, well, Rathalos is, like, a, like, boss in the game and you fight Rathalos and you fight, so it was like we need Hunter from Monster Hunter like why don't we get him in the game and so it hasn't happened yet but maybe sometime fingers cool. crossed I hope yeah. so <laughs> I, I hope I hope that you get it and then you can tell me about it because I want to hear yes. yeah. <laughs> but yeah but so that was when Rathalos showed up and I was like oh yes Rathalos because <laughs> I, I think I had made that connection like I'd heard that it was from Monster Hunter but since I hadn't played him yeah. But then it was just like, oh, that's what that's from. I was like, okay, cool. I mean, you, I know this giant dragon thing from Smash Bros. I've fought it before there. So, because I think it's made a crossover. It's showed up in the Metal Gear Solid games. Oh, and my goodness. I'm going to have Some other stuff. So, it's, yeah, ask it's really. About that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Metal Gear is a pretty cool game. They're making a movie or a series about Metal Gear. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Trying, because as you know, <laughs> shows or movies based on a video game do not always translate well to the big screen no not really ever i can't think of many that have at all yeah it's hard yeah it's (laughs) it's not an easy thing to do other than maybe which i'm still pushing to like 
but it's not directly from a game. It's just like a game like franchise. I'm pushing to get you. To, we'll cover this at some point. People might think it's weird, but I want to talk Pokemon Detective Pikachu oh. on this podcast sometime soon. He has said that. Pokemon is pocket monsters. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that movie. You have it, talked but. about that before. <laughs> yes. yes. We've had discussions about it. He may that slip it onto like. the calendar without telling me. And mm-hmm. I'll just see it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the new Sonic movie I did really like, too. But that's, <laughs> that's a tangent. Um, anyway. But yeah. Where were we at? The Admiral, his team. There's a cat chef. Because why not? He's There's, a calico. You know, it's a, it's a fun nod, again, to the games for the fans there. He is the meowscular chef. Oh, my God. Um, of course. And that's not my pun. That is that is the game. That oh, is, goodness. <laughs> The meowscular chef, Palico meowscular chef, because he's very meowscular with his big meow skulls. Yes, he is, and yeah. he's not afraid. He's not afraid yeah. <laughs> to go fight the the Rathalos, or not only the Rathalos. There's another um, monster that we'll talk about in a bit, and we'll we'll talk about that m- mid credit scene. That yeah. We get I also to had see to say, <laughs> Palico. I, can, I, can, <laughs> I get real quippy in my notes because I'm talking about Meowscular Chef. And then I was like, speaking of cats, Ron Perlman looks like he just walked out of the cast of the musical Cats with that hair and the face. <laughs> and the way he looked. I was like, what is it? You're looking real uh, jellical over here, Mr. Perlman. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, you know, he was on a show called Beauty and the Beast oh. way <laughs> back. I think it was the early 90s, late 80s um, with Linda Hamilton. And I got those vibes. And then huh. once his hair got wet, I was like, okay, that's better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was okay Yeah, with it looked it. better then. <laughs> yeah, sorry to all the fans of the Monster Hunter game who might have enjoyed the hair. I just felt it was better, a little flatter. <laughs> Not so uh, winged out, I guess. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but then I have it under my Admiral notes, but it's more for the movie. But here's my biggest complaint, I guess, which comes right at the end of the movie. And I hinted at it a little bit. There is no conclusion to this movie whatsoever. Uh, Like, I feel like like they're setting it up for a sequel that looking at how this movie was received, I'm not quite sure is going to happen. I don't know that it will happen at all. I thought at least they should get at least a one piece. Yeah. And when they didn't. it was all to set up for a series that might not happen. And because I was like, there's no conclusion because they're literally at the same place this movie started yes. when it ends. You know, there's this tower that's creating these storms, that's creating the portals between worlds. They're in the middle of a fight with another giant dragon, the Gore Magala. Yeah. Is, it comes from the game. Yeah. There. And then, but like, they literally end the movie with them starting a fight with another monster. But remember, <laughs> remember this. It was Disney. Paul. Yeah. It was Paul W. S. Anderson who brought us mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat back in the nineties mm-hmm. and ended it with demons and other creepy things descending yeah. after Just, the fight. So I'm not that big surprised. Plans for movies that don't happen after. I know. I mean, I like, know. if they make a sequel of this, am I going to watch it? Absolutely. Uh, Are we yes. going to cover it? Yeah. 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 We but will. like, we have to. If as long as Team JJ are in it, I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Which I'm sure they would be. I mean, like, we like say how it ends is mid fight with another dragon. Like, but but it did bother me because I'm like, okay, so where they're at? Because they're like, we need to get to the tower and shut down the portals. It's like, well, that's what you were doing at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, the very what are you beginning. Doing now, I mean, so you're what, so confusing. What was the point of this movie? <laughs> Story-wise, when we're left at the same place we started at and they haven't accomplished anything. Yeah. It, it, that That's a big complaint for me. That, yeah. That's what hurt my final ranking score on this a lot. Yeah. Um, was just the plot was nothing. <laughs> well, <laughs> They never accomplished anything. Really. Honestly, I think the movie overall was really just about a lot of action, a lot of effects, yeah. a lot of fighting and things blowing up which were done very well i'm not going to complain about them because they were done well yeah visually it was visually great. fantastic yeah but the lack of story and script is something that you can't ignore 
Yeah. And exactly. I couldn't ignore it in this. And when we get to our rankings, we'll talk about it. But yeah, it's going to be, we, it, it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. We got like a little mid credits scene. Oh, I love it. But that it was just more though. of that same thing. You know, they end up being portaled back to the monster world, at least during this fight. So at least like they gave us this like, oh, by the way, we're not back in like regular world. And they go back. So we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> They've somehow just portaled back in the middle of this fight. Meowskular Chef has joined the fight and he's all yes. <laughs> swords he's blazing. I guess. He's, he's ready to go. Yeah. And then there's this mysterious hooded figure that's watching them from above. Yeah. Who is that? We don't know. It's Again, <laughs> it's like one of those things where they set up like, stick around. It's like, this stuff will be revealed in the sequel, even though. It probably looking won't at, be one. <laughs> we didn't have any, you know, reason to believe we would get to make a sequel, but. High, high hopes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And I one thing I didn't do was search through any of the wikias to find out who the hooded figure could be. Because at, at the end of this movie, I just wanted to make sure my notes were ready for the podcast. And yeah. I didn't feel like, oh, I'm going to, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus yeah. on the, the movie that we did see and not on what the future things could be. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you have anything else to talk about character-wise? No, I think we covered just about everything. I mean, the last couple things I have on the Admiral is that he was really worried about what her world, Artemis's, the real world, would do to his world, which is Mm -hmm. the new world. And he believes that the Sky Tower is the key to her returning to her world. But he also feels like the open gateway would be catastrophic. And, but he does bargain with her and says, if you will help me kill the Rathalos, I'll help you get home. But he also hates waiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Complicated guy. Interesting character. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> um, very interesting. Yeah. So then I guess we will talk about the monsters of oh, Monster Hunter. Goodness. Oh, lots of notes yeah. on those. Oh, yeah. A little bit on each. And I feel like we've already talked about Palico, which is the Admiral's cat companion. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I found out about them is they partner with a hunter, and they're known as Palicos. They appear in the game, and they wear these small suits of armor. And he, to me, he looked like a little pirate. Yeah. And I was down with that. He was really the only non-monster creature that we're going to talk about. I just wanted to point out a couple things about about him. I thought he was cool. Yeah. Neat. I wish we'd seen a little bit more because he was kind of fun. Seemed very out of place if you wouldn't have known (laughs) the, like, video game connection to this movie. But I love that, like, Artemis' whole reaction to him is just this, like, gleeful, confused (laughs) laugh. Like, every time I, like... Okay, like okay, she was well, even like just ready to accept the like level of ridiculousness that that was. <laughs> like, sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like though this movie as a whole, they were catering to the people who w- played the games. Yeah, so that's maybe, what I said at the yeah. top of the podcast. Was like, I would love to hear some feedback from people yes. who played these games and know what you thought about the references, the connections, the nods. And how this movie was based off of using. Because yeah. from what I understand, I have a section in a little bit about like kind of movie versus game. But, you know, from what I understand, like they actually took a lot of care in making sure the costumes and the weapons and the creatures and everything were done very well. They did, because I in the research I did about the monsters and some of the weapons, things looked very similar to what you saw. In the movie. Yeah. And so I can imagine that fans of the game were probably pretty happy about that. Because I know that there are complaints sometimes when not just games, but comics or other books are turned into a movie or a TV show. And things mm-hmm. don't live up to what you have pictured in your you head. You decide or- to change the way things look to make it more like whatever, you know, your image that you're doing. <laughs> that was... Sonic. Speaking of Sonic, since I brought that up earlier, man, uh, the movie studio just got like cyber bullied into fixing that. <laughs> like, it was rough, but I'm glad that they did. And that's one of the reasons I went and saw it in theaters. It's the last movie I saw in theaters, by the way, at this point. 
but um oh wow like a year <laughs> ago too yeah it's, yeah over a year ago um yeah this last time i went to the theaters was to watch sonic but the main reason i made a point to go see it in theaters because the studios took all that time and money to reanimate and remake things that way the fans would be happier with the way things looked and since they took that initiative to do that, I was like, well, I'm going to pay the money to go see it. And I'm glad I did. Yeah, I think that that, you know, when a studio is willing to put their money where their mouth is and take the criticism and realize that they need to they need to change it because it's not living up to what fans expected. I think that's really big. And it actually makes me respect the studio more yeah. because they're willing to accept that, hey, maybe we didn't do this the way we should have. So let's give it, let's give them what they want. Yep. So I feel like we should start with, now that we've talked about the Palico, we should start with what we saw right from the start, which was the Diablos. Yes. The Black Diablos black, specifically black from the game. Diablos. Although they just call it Diablos in yes. the movie. There's no, but apparently there's a couple different like little subspecies or different Diablos in the games. This was the yeah. Black Diablos from what I have gathered. Again, Which is the worst. It's my only like research looking at <laughs> not playing the game. So maybe I'm wrong. And somebody who's played all of them is like, no, you read the wrong thing. You're stupid. But, okay. <laughs> I hope not. Guys, be kind. We do as much research as we can. And we definitely appreciate when you guys bring things <laughs> to us so that we know we can learn more about, about this. Um, yeah. So we definitely appreciate that. What I learned, um, well, we we know the Diablos is what kills Axon Stealer. Yeah. Um, he's a horned subterranean monster made of rock-like armor with legs and horns. Though they do have wings, they burrow in the earth and use their studded tail as a weapon. The Wikia said that Diablos are actually herbivores, but they're very aggressive and will attack or kill anything that comes into their territory. Hmm. That makes sense if you look at the way they yeah. went after anything that disturbed their world. You could imagine, you know, that's... Yeah. It sure liked impaling people with the horns. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did oh. it to Steeler and then like the, the guy falling off the ship early in the movie too oh such such a bad way to go still not as bad as what happened to poor link but Mm. but bad (laughs) yeah it was an interesting looking monster i really liked the eyes were a little goofy for me but but the design was really cool but then looking at the design of it from the games even the eyes and stuff like it was spot on and yeah well you know they they copied what it was like they yeah no one can say if you think about Paul W.S. Anderson, no one can say that he doesn't do the research for his movies. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. in Mortal Kombat plus Resident Evil, I feel like the monsters in those movies or the creatures, characters, resembled what they were supposed to be. Yeah. And I think that you have to give him props to that because it's not easy to pull this stuff mm-hmm. off. He's great at character adaptation and design it's just yeah the story story needs a lot of work Yeah, (laughs) definitely we need to hook him up with someone that can take the story to the you know bring the story to life after he's done all the research and he can direct it it's just it's got to be what more Mm -hmm. well thought out i guess yeah next we have the near cillis which I first said it's a scorpion like creature that injects paralyzing venom and then uses human bodies as an incubator for its spawn. They yeah. don't Ooh. like sunlight. Creepy eggs. Ugh. The... Not even when they were on Link, but like, even like you just kind of see when she notices like there's like this part like of eggs like hanging from the cave and she shines her light through it. And so you can see one like crawling around while it's lit up. Oh gosh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, no. And I'm not, I am not bothered by spiders or bugs, but Oh, I got the willies from that. That was just really, yeah, that was a bit much. Yeah. And we know they have the, uh, the t- venom is toxic, at least supposed to be for the Diablos. And they do paralyze you, as we talked about, too. Like, mm-hmm. that's what happened to Artemis. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess there was like a queen 
yeah. in this like colony because there was one that was real big, but they didn't really like expound on that. But yeah, they didn't tell us. We didn't no. get yeah, all you the information. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like heat or light. Nope. They stay inside their cave mm-hmm. and, except for at night and then they come out and hunt at night. And it seems like most nights they just spend trying to claw their way into Hunter's little yes. getaway there. <laughs> yes. He set that up pretty quick. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, I don't know how long ago he fell off the ship, but he seemed to just go and build it. And it seemed like a safe place. Yeah. As long as you're quiet. But yes. they knew you're there anyway. Yeah. Because they keep coming back every night. <laughs> <laughs> they they have a, a, a their memory is intact. Yeah, they have a good memory. They know where to go back to. So yeah. they want to get that food source. Mm-hmm. Uh, next to talk about, I think we mentioned. I talked a little bit about Rathalos, just from yes. my Smash Bros. fandom of that. But I had a moment because I didn't even know that like Rathalos was going to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. So it was a cool thing for me when it showed up, and I was like, Rathalos, that name's from the oh. Like from Smash Bros, because I don't know Monster Hunter really. Like, that thing. Yay. And I got super excited. But like I had a thought because I was like, okay, Diablos was taken care of, and that's what killed Bravo team. And then I got to thinking about it after they took Diablos out, and I was like, wait a minute. Like I had my own like thought process going into my notes. I paused the movie and I was like, you know what? I don't think Diablos was the biggest bad to worry about. Like, as I'm like, I'm like thinking, cause I was like, I just remembered that they had like the sand melting into glass and Bravo team was all charred. Yes. Diablos never breathed fire. So it no. has to be something else. So I'm like, my wheels are turning in my <laughs> head and I'm like, stop. I was like, something else is coming. Yes. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> Something's coming. and it paid off big time for me. And I got excited cause I was like, I know what that is. Like, I had this like nerdy <laughs> moment of like, I know Rathalos. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a friend from work. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> friend from Smash Bros. It's, uh. <laughs> if it's a friend from work, it's not a friend you want to piss off. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So then when Rathalo shut up, I was like, and that's the fire breathing baddie I'm waiting on. Yes. And he, it looked awesome. Like I mentioned, yeah. from knowing the, the creature, the monster, as like a boss that I've fought in another video game. Like... They did a really good job with it. Like as I said, as cheesy as the movie is plot wise and with logic, they did the monsters a lot of justice. And I give them a lot of credit for that because it looked incredible. All of them did from like the what I would, had looked like what the, the creatures look like in the game versus in the movie. And they took yeah. a lot of care. Yes, they did. I appreciate that so much, too. And I was having some major gold road vibes back in the real world. When Rathalos has taken on that uh, army convoy there. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> is this the military or the golden golden army, right? Yes. <laughs> Eliminated in one fail swoop of the dragon. <laughs> I love just the little shots too, where she is they're pulling her to the stretcher and you keep seeing this little shadow go over her. And you thought it was the propeller, but it was not the propeller. It was it was Rathalos. And mm-hmm. then when the plane is going, there's a plane and it's going in one direction. The Rathlos is going the other. And all you see is like the shadow over the plane. Mm-hmm. I loved that. that. Cool. I love those little <laughs> moments. Not every movie will give it to them. You know, will give it to us. But I really, really enjoyed those moments. And again, playing with the tank like it's a toy. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> But we did learn from the Admiral that the only weakness that the Rathalos has is just before they breathe fire. Yeah. So you had that is the only time that which yeah I looked up into that a little bit and I have I'll I'll talk about it in my next section that I have which is the games versus movie thing because I was like is that how you take one out I'm like looking up like <laughs> like on like googling like how to defeat the Rathalos in Monster Hunter. <laughs> Because I wanted to see if there's the same nods. It's like, oh, you have to wait till it's about to breathe fire. And then you do it. It's like, oh, no. Apparently, they're actually pretty easy to beat. And they're kind of a oh. low-level thing that's not even that big of a deal. And they turned it into a much bigger enemy for the movie. But that's cool. <laughs> well, too, um, after the Rathalos, we got the Gormagala. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between those two. Because at first, they kind of look similar to me. But the Rathalos is more like, it's a winged flying 
two footed dragon. Mm -hmm. But the Gormagala has like six limbs, clawed wings, covered in these exoskeleton plates, and a lot of yeah. other little nuances. Yeah, the apparently in the games it has like a like berserker mode that it can go into, and there's like all this like energy and stuff off of it from the little bit of research I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> like apparently it's a much bigger deal. Yeah. Which then I was like, well, if they do get that sequel, then how are they supposed to start the movie with that kind of thing? And yeah. not build and then build from there. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those things where they've already filmed the sequel and we don't know that they have. Probably <laughs> not, but I'm just throwing it out there for yeah. banter. <laughs> mm, who knows? <laughs> I'm not because it makes I hate that about this, that it makes me interested to see the next one, even though this one wasn't good enough to really warrant it getting know, to happen, but I know. but I'm still intrigued enough. <laughs> I know I want to see. Uh, I want to know what happens. At least give me mm -hmm. a synopsis. Let yeah. me picture it in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe they'll just be like the, the novel that the novel. <laughs> follows <laughs> what happens in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then be. the only other monsters that I have on my list, we have Apseros I mentioned, which I know. I was like, it's an ankylosaurus type monster, also an herbivore, and I love it so much. And then we have the cephalos, which we don't know much about, but it's the thing that was hiding in the sand by the water that Hunter That's kills what and they it cook was. and eat it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I couldn't figure out what it was, and I tried to find it. Yeah, because the apseros, the ones that look like an ankylosaurus and a turtle. Yeah, I really liked them a lot. When they mm -hmm. were at the water, I was pretty happy. Yes, I'm welcome like, oh, to Jurassic Park. Yes. <laughs> I was so excited. And I couldn't. You're almost like, yeah, when they walk out to this oasis and they're all, all these Epseros are coming down and drinking the water. You could almost hear. Oh, <laughs> yes. I loved it. I loved it. It's, you know that I'm going to go. Uh, you know I'm going to gravitate towards that. When those mm -hmm. came on the screen, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Thank you for this present. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty much all I have for notes on creatures. Cool. I really like well, I know them. you have some stuff on like weapons and Just stuff like that. Just a little bit. So Just a little bit. I will bit. tie into that by doing my cuz my game versus movie is really quick. Okay. So I think you can kind of transition from that. Okay. But uh, because mainly, yeah, I said like Rathalos isn't actually a major like baddie in the games or that strong. Apparently, it's kind of I read like a little article. It says like many new adventurers, new hunters playing that game learn very quickly not to just take random eggs from nests because that's how you meet Rathalos a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not an easy enemy to fight, but apparently it's not like the big one that you have to worry about the most. Uh. Yeah, the characters we mentioned, you know, a lot of the like Admiral and his team are taken directly from the game. And then uh, monster design was super accurate. Uh, even the cooking moment when I mentioned when they kill the cephalos and like they're cooking and eating it. Apparently they paid a lot of like attention detail to the like tools and equipment, like the like mobile, like camping and cooking setup. Like because that's a big part of the game is you have to like uh, harvest meat and cook it to keep your health up. You kill creatures oh, okay. and monsters and then you have to cook and so like there's a whole like cooking and like ingredients and stuff like aspect of the game like breath of the wild or something like that where you have to create like ingredients and recipes and stuff like that and so they took a lot of care apparently and like the tools that he was using in this little campsite that they had came from right from the game oh, which is wow. really cool and then uh the weapons and stuff you'll talk about those costumes and weapons were spot on however the sizes of the weapons and some of the moves that they did with these weapons are a little more realistic. They're even more over the top in the games, apparently. I thought they were pretty but... OTT in this movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them apparently were they're big. even bigger in the games. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, that's the kind of the notes that I had found. So I figured with talking about the weapons at the end of that, that can lead you into all right what you found. On okay. There. So of course we saw Hunter's bow which is um, a versatile weapon that can be modified based on whatever the prey is that you're um, going after, which we saw him use it to let them know, using the red chalk to let them know that Diablos were coming. We also saw him light fire on it and use it to shoot uh, fire at a Diablo. 
So it's pretty versatile. The great sword, which reminds me a pyramid heads weapon in Silent Hill. <laughs> Like some of the other weapons, it's charged with fiery energy. So it, it like heats up and has fire. Um, uh-huh. the dual blades, which also it's, um, Hunter was teaching Artemis to use the dual blades. Those are the ones that, um, put them together and this energy and flames, it kind of freaked her out <laughs> when <laughs> that appeared. The slinger is the tool that was around Artemis's wrist that she was able yeah. to shoot projectiles or shoot um, something as a pull tool so she can kind of hang on. Yeah. The switch axe was a double-sided bladed axe that the Admiral uses to fight the Rathalos and the Gormagala. And the insect glaive is a double-bladed staff that can be used as a weapon or to move distances like using it like a pole vault. And Hunter used it in the last battle versus the Gormagala. Mm-hmm. So I thought, yeah, as we get this like scene of like the three of them like flying through the uh, air towards it. <laughs> I know it just makes me think of oh my gosh, I don't know. It's like very Final Fantasy. Yes! <laughs> like, <laughs> so many things from this movie, like it with these giant weapons, and you're just like flying through the air with energy from the <laughs> weapons, and it's just very, very video game. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with yeah. that at all. Um, just really interesting the way that they, you have to give them props for keeping things close to the video game because things don't translate well sometimes. Yeah. The respect they gave to the video game was amazing. Yeah. There's a, yeah. We did say there's, there's something very positive that we can take away from this movie for yeah. sure is the care and research done to do justice at least to the de- like character and creature design and really pay homage to the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that they definitely, it lived up to the connection to the game. You definitely could watch mm-hmm. this and know it was based on a video game. Yeah. It was, it was really cool enough to at least make me consider checking out the games. Yeah. Cause I think they have some of them on switch. I feel like you're going to have to and report back. Yeah, I don't know. I've got so many other games I'm trying to play right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I think that about wraps up our talks about characters and monsters and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I think it's time. So I think it's time to get into some production all notes. Right. And fun tidbits you get We there. have been talking about a lot of them already, so I don't have as many as when we started. We've already talked about the fact that Milo Jovovich is married to the director. They've worked together on five films. It's the seventh movie she's starred in that's based on a video game because, as everyone in the world knows, unless you're living under a rock, she played the role of Alice in the Resident Evil franchise. Yes. Which her husband directed (laughs) a bunch of them, but not all of them. So regarding Captain Artemis, Anderson wanted the lead character to be from outside the Monster Hunter universe so that he could introduce the world to the moviegoer in the same way that he experienced the games for the first time himself. That's so cool. I feel like we're supposed to look at Artemis like she's our character that we're playing. That mm-hmm. I think that makes sense. Um, let's see. Rapper T.I., who was not in the film that long, but he played Link. (laughs) Probably he survived the longest of her team. He joined the film's cast because his youngest son is a huge fan of the video games. I feel like we hear that from time to time when we're, when we're Mm. talking about this, like people are choosing to be in a movie because someone they know, or a loved one is uh, a big fan of a franchise. So yeah. Um, I love it. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Like, here's doesn't really spoil much of anything for WandaVision if people see it, but I finally watched the like behind the scenes, like making of thing that uh, Disney Plus put out over WandaVision the other night. And they were talking to, is it Deborah, Ann, no, Deborah Joe Rupp? Yes. Or something from uh, that 70s show and stuff like that. But, you know, she had a, a role in, in WandaVision and she said that it was because her nephews had told her that if she didn't take a job from Marvel and be in a Marvel thing. They would never talk to her again, (laughs) jokingly. But like, she was just like, it was her like younger, like family members that were like, 
you got offered a role in Marvel, <laughs> you're going to take it. Of course. <laughs> like... They want the bragging rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can imagine that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's a, it seems like it's a common thing. And I know it's happened before in yeah. some of the movies that we've covered. Um, so the last few things that I have to talk about, actually, there's one more because we've already talked about the reviews um, on Rotten Tomatoes. So the video effects were provided by Mr. X VFX and are a mix of practical explosions and CGI. So there were some practical effects mixed in. Overall, I have to say, I think the effects in this were pretty awesome. I think the action and the effects were great. Those were the yeah. high points for me. Yeah, we didn't have any of those like CGI complaints no. that we have on some of the movies we cover. No, like just, I think just some others. Visually, it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, then we get to talk about some quotes. I don't have a lot. I have, I think, th I have, have a few. Three. All right, a couple. I have two. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well, well, when Hunter shows her that they need the Nercellus venom to kill the Diablos, Artemis says, to kill a monster, you need a monster. And I thought, yep, yeah, that works. And after the Admiral arrives and they're able to escape the stampede of the Absalos, Artemis says, thank you, thank you. And the Admiral, Admiral responds with, don't thank me yet. And then he punches her in the face. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. And then <laughs> after Palico brings him his drink, the Admiral says to Artemis, what's the matter? You don't have cats in your world? And I liked that. So yeah, those are my quotes. Nice. I have two. Um, first one comes from pretty early on. Uh, I think it was Marshall. I'm not <laughs> even sure. While they're like going through the like storm in the portal. But he's talking to Link in the back he says you ever seen lightning like this before and very calmly and collectively he responds no never but i feel pretty secure here in this big steel box holding my metal gun <laughs> 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 he's doing very well to keep himself together i yeah. thought it was funny and then i love the moment when the uh, cephalos jumps out of the sand and hunter kills it and then turns around and looks at kind of a scared Artemis and just yells bait <laughs> to where she goes bait you're funny you know what I'm gonna do next time you're dying in the desert okay. nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh loved it those were so good this mm. was a fun one there were some fun parts to it and the effects were great and the creatures were great which usually yes. is enough for me mm -hmm. yeah it's just story and plot mean a lot. Yeah, they do. I didn't mean for that to rhyme like that and sound like it was, but it did. Um. Well, you know what? When it's when it's a hundred and three minutes, I gotta have more than the creatures. Yeah, you gotta have something to make that worth yeah. it. Yeah. So, with that said, we gotta talk about our rankings and see where we land on this. Uh -huh. We do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we have a stare off to decide who's gonna go first. <laughs> Because <laughs> we both did had never seen this. This was one that we've gone into. Neither one of us knew. We just yeah. knew very little about it. I try not to research anything. I just kind of go in blind as if I can, if I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. As we've said, as I've said, the effects were amazing. The creatures were amazing. I think Team JJ did the best they could with what script they had, but I feel like it could have been better. Yeah, I feel like the story could have been better. I feel like there's more we should have seen to make this end in a way that would drive people to want to see a sequel. So in the end, this is my lowest rating that I've given a movie other than Thanksgiving, because I just can't. <laughs> I can't justify putting it over any of the other movies that we've covered. I just can't. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I came in at a 6.5. All right. I am. Uh, I don't know why, because we never established that this is what our rankings mean, but I've always looked at it like a like a letter grade. <laughs> so like it has to be like a seven point something to be a passing movie. Like it's like a C. That's just kind oh, of don't like tell me that you're going in the seven. How I've looked at it. I almost did. I almost did. But then I was like, I, I can't. You can't. And so I had to kind of tweak a little bit and be like. I know technically the score is like not passing, but 
in the grand scheme of things, like it isn't because even though, you know, the visuals and the nods and, you know, the background of it was so good. What is a movie if there's no story, no plot, and it leaves you frustrated at the end going like, well, that was worth nothing. Like, <laughs> But the things that I liked, I really, really, really liked. Yeah. So it's still kind of on the higher end of that under. So I'm a little over you, but not by much. I, I, I went with a 6.8 on mine. Okay. All yeah. right. Uh, again, I think these are the lowest rankings we've given out. Yeah. But I feel like we had to do it. It just had to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, do I re- regret watching this movie? No, no not, not at, all. at all. It was fun. I had a good time yeah, watching it. Yeah, me too. And I had a good time talking yeah. about it. So in the end, it's totally worth it. Absolutely. And I enjoy it. But like, we've watched and talked about many movies that are a lot better yeah. than this one. <laughs> and we had to, I mean, eventually we were going to get to one or more that are not what we're mm-hmm. hoping for or didn't live up to. It isn't even though this really isn't about a movie, not living up to something. Yeah. Because we have done a little bit of, you know, looking into stuff when we talk about what movies we're going to cover on this podcast. Yeah. We've known what the critics and reviews have said about this movie long before we decided to watch it. So it's not like we're shocked that it wasn't incredible. We kind of knew what we were getting Absolutely. into without knowing exactly what we were getting yeah, into <laughs> we did so this wasn't really that much of a surprise yeah in fact because i wasn't sure what we were getting into although i knew a little bit it made it i actually enjoyed it more because the bar was kind of set in the middle instead of it being set so high because seeing the previews which i saw like the trailer a couple of times it looked like a movie that was right up my alley which it is However, I couldn't justify giving it higher, not when all of the other movies have been, you know, deserving of being in the sevens. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And now, you know what that means. I know what that means. You guys know what that means, right, listeners? You're not responding to, oh, you can't because it's a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Feedback time. Now we can actually hear back from you guys who left feedback for this episode. Yeah. So. Thank you. Let's get to it. And our feedback this week, unfortunately, we just have the one, but fortunately, it is the incredible Steve Brown leaving us his patent pending Steve Brown voicemails. I wonder if Steve is going (laughs) to get a patent or some type of recognition for his feedback format because he just seems to be on top of it, sending it every week and live steving his experiences with the movies. I like that live steving. (laughs) That is amazing. He definitely has to call it that from now on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If he doesn't, I will. All right. That Love sounds you, good. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's hear what he had to say this week about Monster Hunter. All right. Here we go. She's a woman, but she still manages to make that sound like an insult. Hey, Daphne and Pake, it's Steve. Just started Monster Hunter. Okay. I'm just going to say it. Mila Jovovich makes anything look sexy. Okay. If Mila Jovovich <laughs> is dead 23 minutes into this movie, I'm out. <laughs> okay, she's alive. I don't know what just came out of that guy, and she just did an aerosol blowtorch. Scene of them fighting each other, going back and forth between catching each other and, and escaping. Did he speak some English in there? Dude, this is a great fight scene. But he's gonna eat that paper, isn't he? <laughs> Bonding over chocolate. I like it. Diablos, it's a devil. I want to watch Grandma's Boy again. Hey, if you can stay on there for eight seconds, uh, you know, you win the rodeo. (laughs) This movie's got like 40 more minutes. What else is there to happen? (laughs) Oh, I see. They're trying to get to the storm so she can get home. Gotcha. (laughs) Who are these guys? We're halfway through the movie and they're bringing us a new team? Huh? More than halfway. There's only 30 minutes left. And they speak English? I didn't even realize Ron Perlman was in this. I knew when we saw the sand turn to glass, we were going to get a dragon. I'm loving this dragon fight. So if the dragon is in our world now, that means that the other world is safe from the dragon, right? Well, that was a lot of fun. And uh, I kind of hope it it does uh, well enough uh, or it did well enough streaming, whatever, uh, that we get a sequel. All right. (laughs) Bye. 
Nice. Thanks, Steve. And yeah, you uh, reiterated a lot of the points and stuff that we talked about this episode, for sure. That, you really did, Steve. Yeah, that uh, I think I would be okay with seeing a sequel to it. I don't know if it's going to happen. It was not super widely well received, but I think it was fun. It was worth watching. And then, yeah, you said this, the fight scenes. I mean, yeah, put Tony Jaw in there and of course they're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> He's fantastic. And I think we also mentioned in this episode that Mila Jovovich and Tony Jaw, Team JJ, definitely mm-hmm. worked well together yes. in this film. And I'd be okay with them doing a sequel. We could probably cover it on this podcast. I think so. Yeah. Who knows if it's ever going to happen. But if it does, we're in. <laughs> we're in. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. And anybody else who would love to leave us some voicemails or any kind of just text message feedbacks, not text messages, obviously, but messages in text form is what I mean. Um, We can read those (laughs) off. And we'd love to hear from more of you guys because I know that there's some of you guys out there listening. So reach out to us. We'd love to hear what you think. Even if you don't have a lot of quote unquote deep thoughts about a movie, that's fine. We just want to interact with our listeners. We'd love that. So anybody has anything to say, just reach out because we'd love to talk to you. And you can do that a couple of different ways. Of course, as I say at the end of every episode, you can submit theories, thoughts, feedback, anything like that to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash run for your lives podcast. You can email us at run for your lives podcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at RFYL podcast and Instagram at run for your lives podcast. And if you're enjoying the show, make sure other than the voicemails and feedback to share with your friends if you think that they would love it as well or you know if there's any movies that we've covered that you know you have friends who are big fans of send them those podcast episodes or you can just always send them to our website at runforyourlivespodcast.com and there's links to all of our social media all of the podcast players like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Audible, Pandora, YouTube, everything. We always appreciate the love. Definitely, we do. If you have any ideas for movies that we may not have on our list to cover, We'd love for you to send them to us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because we are always looking for new fun stuff to talk about. So. Oh, <laughs> yes, we are. All right. We don't want to well, miss something. So. No, not at all. <laughs> well, uh, give a little couple of shout outs to other stuff going on in our podcast universe around us. Of course, Strange Indeed is back. Kind of. We did. You know, I mentioned it last week. We did cover the Oscar nominated film Promising Young Woman. And that's still all that we've done right now. We're still kind of looking for what our next project and movies and shows and whatever to do over there is next. But we're talking. We're going to figure something out. There's just it's like a weird dry spell area where there's like not a lot of great stuff coming out right now, but there is stuff coming out in the future. So we're just kind of biding time till then. So we'll see what we do. So, you know, stay tuned and I'll always talk about it on here if something else is coming up. So you'll hear from me first. And then our good friends, Mark and Steve, over on Panels to Pixels. Been doing some fun stuff. Of course, Mark and Steve are covering Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, the Disney Plus MCU show, which has been incredible. It's what I'm watching when I get done recording this. And then <laughs> also, and they're doing, again, kind of a, a double thing because Snowpiercer ended. But now Mark and Jamie are covering the Amazon Prime series, Invincible which is an animated show based off of the Robert Kirkman comic book. And that also is something I'm watching tonight after recording because it premieres tonight, another episode as well. (laughs) So yeah, those have been awesome. And I can't wait to watch the new episodes of those. And then panels to pixels, listen to Mark, Steve and Jamie covering those shows. They've been doing great with those. So yeah, definitely go check those out. And of course the walking dead cast is actually just wrapped there. Like this season. 10 C. So, you know, if you've been watching those, go check those out. And then I'm sure they'll be back to their format of kind of like an episode every two weeks or so covering different movies and stuff. I don't know. I don't want to speak for Jason, but yeah, it definitely <laughs> gives the dead cast some love. Cause uh, he's been having some issues with like the Facebook algorithms and stuff. They deleted his Facebook page for some reason, you know, 10,000 followers on there and, They just unpublished it with no reasoning, no violation, no anything. And so I don't understand. So maybe if we have a listener who works with Facebook for a cast that randomly out there, get with us or with Jason and figure out what the fuck happened because it is a mess over there. But luckily he's been, you know, Patreon and Discord and stuff like that. It's been keeping things rolling, but it's kind of a nightmare. So, uh, you know, think about Jason and hopefully we can get this stuff figured out over there for Podcastica and Deadcast Needs. 
Absolutely. And if you are looking for Walking Dead cast while the Facebook page is not working, you can hit them up at facebook.com slash podcastica, which yes. is the network that Walking Dead cast is on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, figured in their little time of weirdness and confusion to give them some love and shout out and hopefully yes. that stuff will get worked out soon. <laughs> but yeah, um, speaking of great stuff going on on uh, podcasts, though. Daphne, why don't you tell everybody what's going on next week right here? Next week, we're diving back into the water as we tackle Deep Blue Sea, which is a film from 1999. Three genetically engineered sharks work together to outsmart humans and achieve their ultimate goal of escaping captivity. We are joined by our good friend Greg to talk about this movie, which contains one of the most iconic death scenes in cinema history. I think that's a fair assessment of that scene yeah i think that is fair to say (laughs) because i spoiler not really spoiler but no because i i hadn't seen the movie in full i hadn't actually watched this movie until we recorded and talked about it with greg but even i knew i had seen that scene in gif and clip form a billion times before because yeah yeah, it's it's huge i'm not going to say what it is just in case you're one of those like three people on planet earth who doesn't know what that scene is (laughs) <laughs> and you will if you watch it. But yeah. <laughs> yes, it's definitely action packed. And we had such a great time breaking it down with Greg. I can't wait to release it next week. Yeah, it'll be fun. And with that, we've reached the end of our episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I am Daphne. And I'm Paik. And if you have to run from scorpion like spiders whose offspring incubate and eat you from the inside out. Ugh. You'd better run for your lives. Bye-bye.